It's often said you are what you eat, but what if you don't know what you're eating? The illegal global trade in counterfeit food is worth billions of dollars. It also defrauds legitimate producers and poses huge health risks for consumers. So who's behind it? This is the first of a two-part investigation. The global food trade keeps us constantly supplied with things to eat and drink. And most of the time, we pay it little attention. But do we really know what's in that food? How about horse meat lasagna or fake beef burgers? Or olive oil made without olives? Or tuna laced with deadly nitrates? Counterfeit foods, cheap and sometimes dangerous copies of the real thing, have been found all over the world and in even the most expensive premium products. It's a secretive and deadly multi-billion dollar business. Our journey along its hidden paths has revealed a deeply disturbing tale. In which whistleblowers and insiders unveil the trade's darkest practices. While investigators and prosecutors struggle to expose the crime gangs and profiteers involved. A battle against criminal corruption running through the international food business and onto our plates. So how have these mafias gained such control over what we eat? And what can be done to root them out? Welcome to the shocking world of food fraud. Food products are often being recalled from supermarket shelves. It's usually for minor reasons, and most of the time we barely notice it happening. But sometimes something about one of those recalls makes us stop and think more deeply about the food we take for granted. Suddenly, we understand that knowing what we're eating and where it comes from can be a matter of life and death. It's then that we give thanks for those whose job it is to pay better attention to such things. In late 2012, Ireland's chief food safety official noticed that beef prices were plummeting. Worried about where this cheap meat was coming from, he ordered DNA sampling of 27 commercially available products. We found one product with about one third horse DNA in it, and which was just an, an incredible finding. We went back and checked, we double checked and we triple checked because we understood that if we were to go out public with such a story, it was going to have you know, quite an effect. The horse meat was found first in hamburgers, then later in lasagna, then moussaka and ravioli. In fact, it was discovered in a wide range of products being sold to consumers as beef all over the world. At the time, we thought it was an Irish problem. It turned out to be a global problem and products have been withdrawn from shelves in places like Singapore, Hong Kong, in some of the Caribbean countries. Uh, so really, we, we are looking at what really has developed into a massive fraud. This particular scam was based around minced meat, one of the most common ingredients in a wide variety of off-the-shelf ready meals. Had it not been for an unusually diligent government official, it would have gone unnoticed for years. Instead, the revelation sparked outrage around the world. Ingrid Kragel started her career as an investigator on this case. She's a member of Food Watch, 
a European organization that protects consumers. L'Irlande, elle a balancé toutes les infos. Elle balance tout. Elle balance les noms des marques, elle balance les lieux des points de vente. Elle demande aussi à l'industrie de faire des tests, toute l'industrie de la viande, des milliers de tests. Et étonnamment, elle met tous les tests en ligne. Toutes les informations sont disponibles et ça, c'était quand même exceptionnel. Further research revealed that the adulterated meat had been used in around four and a half million ready meals. Products distributed by some of the biggest brands in Europe. But how did it get into the food chain in the first place? A major international investigation quickly threw up clues that pointed to the Netherlands. Specialist fraud detectors from the Dutch Food Safety Authority were called in. Where is the source of this? That was the big question. Who put the, the horse meat inside the beef products? With global food fraud now generating as much profit as drug running, it's perhaps not surprising that Karen Gusso's 17-strong unit has the same investigative and arrest powers as a narcotics squad. The main thing that we do when we carry out criminal investigations uh, is to reconstruct the money flow and the flow of goods and connect these together. But this time, it wasn't quite so straightforward. The team quickly identified the manufacturers of the suspect mincemeat products. And then behind them, they found several wholesalers. But beyond these wholesalers, there were yet more traders. Market specialists who buy and sell meat online, in quantities of hundreds of thousands of tons. That's when it got complicated. La filière était très opaque parce que qu'il y avait derrière des traders. Et il est très difficile pour les autorités de mettre la main sur des traders qui n'ont parfois pas de siège en Europe. D'ailleurs, les responsables de l'époque parlent d'une véritable plongée hein, dans la comptabilité. Ça a été très, très complexe pour eux. Eventually, the detectives began looking at a Dutch meat trader called Jan Fassen. So Jan Fassen is actually someone we've known for a long time. He first caught our attention in 2008 um, when we arrested him exactly because of this fact. So we were hoping uh, that would scare him off. But then in 2013, we discovered that he hadn't stopped. To avoid the Dutch authorities, Jan Fassen had moved to Belgium, where he teamed up with, among others, the owner of this warehouse. Here, they began buying and storing frozen horse meat, which at two euros per kilo was less than half the price of beef. Soon, they were making 20 million euros in profit a year, although the business was challenging. Jan Fassen had to hire an office space in a big freezer complex. He had an employee that was changing labels daily. He had businesses in, in Cyprus and in other countries. He made a whole business of it. It was his daily work. That doesn't sound easy to me. Fassen sat at the head of a large network. His company was registered in Cyprus and imported horse meat from Canada and Romania. The meat was then sold to his associate wholesalers. The two main ones were located in Belgium and France. It was at these companies that the fraud took place. The horse meat was transformed into beef by the simple magic of a label. The wholesalers sold the fake mincemeat to a Luxembourg manufacturer of ready meals. These fake products were then distributed to hundreds of supermarkets. Il y avait la responsabilité de ceux qui l'achetaient à des prix ridicules, de ceux qui l'utilisaient, mais personne, en tout cas c'est ce qu'ils prétendent, n'a vérifié l'ADN de la viande. Et donc dans des quantités phénoménales comme ça, avec autant d'opérateurs économiques, c'est quand même étonnant. This willful neglect infuriated Christophe Brousset who says it shamed the whole industry. He worked for 20 years as a trader for several major European food processing groups. After Horsegate, as the scandal was later called, he turned whistleblower. Tout ce que j'entendais, c'était soit des industriels ou leurs représentants qui disaient euh, « Mais non, c'est un cas isolé, chez nous, on a la meilleure industrie alimentaire du monde, c'est fini, c'était avant, maintenant c'est clean. » Mais je connaissais évidemment les pratiques de, du milieu. Et c'est à ce moment-là que je me suis dit « Bon, ce serait quand même pas mal que quelqu'un en parle. » Et là, j'ai commencé à parler, oui. Parce que j'attendais que quelqu'un d'autre le fasse et personne ne le faisait. 
Bruce says he decided to go public even though he himself had been forced to commit fraud. Oui, j'ai dû acheter des produits que normalement j'aurais pas acheté, oui. Parce qu'on me le demandait, parce que bah déjà j'avais pas le choix. Donc quand on est employé en général, bah on fait ce qu'on son patron nous demande. Donc moi on me demandait d'acheter des produits qui étaient de mauvaise qualité, donc j'étais contraint de le faire. Il y avait une fraude généralisée, oui. Sur un produit, sur plusieurs produits, oui. Sur le miel, sur le poivre, sur le cumin, sur le paprika, sur plein de produits. In 2015, he wrote the first of a number of books exposing fraudulent practices across the food processing industry. Il faut bien comprendre que c'est pas un acheteur tout seul qui décide de frauder, par exemple. C'est un environnement, à la fois sa structure à lui, qui décide de frauder, à la fois ses fournisseurs, qui lui proposent des produits pour frauder, et à la fois des clients qui acceptent de recevoir des produits à des prix qui ne sont pas normaux. Many of Christophe Rousset's revelations were dismissed or contested by his former industry, but added to the outrage many felt about Horsegate, they did prompt the European authorities to act. J'ai fermé les yeux, donc j'étais dans un environnement qui ne qui, qui me permettait pas réellement de prendre du recul. It's here, in Brussels, that the major rules concerning Europe's food are devised. It's then up to the individual states to implement them. For Eric Marin, an official at the European Commission, the horse meat scandal was also a turning point. L'emballement médiatique a fait que c'est devenu une crise et qu'il a fallu gérer cette crise. Until then, Marin had been proud of the European public health surveillance system. But he discovered that Europe was badly equipped to deal with this new threat affecting its food. Ici, on s'est dit, mais tout le système qu'on a bâti pendant des années, parce qu'on a construit le, la chaîne alimentaire est une des plus sûres euh, au monde en Europe. On a bâti tout un système qui était lié à comment détecter les problèmes de santé publique. Et là, quelque part, on se retrouvait complètement désarmé face à quelque chose qui est moins contrôlé dans les entreprises. Et il y a une prise de conscience générale qu'il fallait faire quelque chose, non plus simplement pour détecter les problèmes de santé publique, mais détecter les suspicions de fraude. Europe's food fraud network was born out of this concern. Its officials now work round the clock to try and track down counterfeit food. It leaves accidents such as food poisoning to others to investigate and focuses almost exclusively on intentional cases of fraud. OK, très clair car là, bon ça c'est vraiment de la fraude, hein, donc euh, on les met dans notre rapport euh, semanal pour les États membres. On est passé ici à la création d'un réseau européen avec des points de contact dans chaque État membre où on pouvait échanger des informations confidentiel, sensible, euh, en toute confiance, pour pouvoir agir et coopérer entre les États membres. Et ça, c'était déjà une première révolution. For this to happen, all the 27 European states must be flawlessly compliant with the rules. But sometimes they aren't, as demonstrated by a 2019 case, also involving beef, six years after Horsegate. The scandal was serious, and France was at the heart of it. This time, the fraud concerned a government order for 1,500 tons of mint steaks intended for distribution to charities. But the charities raised the alarm when they discovered the strange whitish color of the meat. The beef had been ordered from Poland, which was a controversial decision from the outset. Pour moi, c'est assez difficile à comprendre parce qu'on est un des pays avec la plus belle industrie agricole, avec probablement les meilleurs produits au monde. Donc on aille acheter du steak à l'autre bout de l'Europe, dans des pays où on sait très bien, enfin, la, la, la réputation de la Pologne en, en termes de, de qualité alimentaire est exécrable, extrêmement mauvaise. In recent years, the rest of Europe has purchased a lot of cheap Polish beef. Its competitive prices due partially to low labor costs. As a result, Poland has become one of the world's leading meat producers, with an industry worth around 6 billion euros a year. But some are concerned. 
en tant qu'acheteur industriel, jamais j'aurais acheté un produit comme celui-là en Pologne. Ou alors j'aurais contrôlé, surcontrôlé, vérifié, survérifié, je serais allé sur place, j'aurais fait le tour des usines, j'aurais interrogé les, les, les producteurs, enfin je me serais assuré vraiment que le produit était conforme. C'est devenu un acteur économique sur le secteur de la viande absolument incontournable. Tout le monde se fournit là-bas. On a vu cette explosion en fait, du marché, du commerce. Il y a eu énormément d'investissements. Le véritable problème, c'est que les, les contrôles n'ont pas suivi. Those fears were realized in 2019, when the French charities in receipt of the meat had it tested. Alors on trouve du tissu osseux, on trouve du tissu conjonctif, des glandes, des muqueuses, des tissus lymphoïdes. Donc en fait, voilà, on est, ça a été remplacé par tous les sous-produits euh, possibles et tous les, euh, les déchets d'abattoir qu'on peut trouver. Voilà. C'est assez peu ragoûtant. Donc voilà, Donc, euh, en termes de protéines, non seulement on n'est pas suffisamment haut, mais en plus, pour faire monter le taux de protéines, on a mis des protéines végétales. Donc il y a quasiment, oui, il y a, il y a très peu de viande en fait dans ce produit. In other words, pure beefsteak, apparently replaced by slaughterhouse byproducts and protein supplements. And this meat was intended for people in need. Back in Paris, the matter soon drew the attention of French Senator Fabien Gay, who set up a commission to investigate further. Lors de la première audition, je trouve des services de l'État euh, qui sont censés euh, contrôler et faire les choses, euh, plutôt ouvrir le parapluie, c'est-à-dire dire, dire ben, c'est pas notre faute. Euh, c'est euh, évidemment les industriels qu'on et euh, donc là euh, je décide de, euh, de creuser. It should have been a straightforward inquiry according to EU rules. Each link in the supply chain providing all the documents necessary to establish the origin and destination of the food. This is called traceability and it works if everyone follows the regulations. On s'est rendu compte qu'on était incapable de faire la traçabilité et la provenance de la viande de bœuf. C'est-à-dire que quand on a auditionné, y compris des, des ministres, et qu'on a posé des questions, on a dit, mais bon, est-ce que c'est de la viande polonaise, de la viande canadienne ou, ou de la viande ukrainienne euh, Est-ce que vous êtes capable de nous dire la traçabilité Et là, on a appris que non. Senator Gay told us that he was unable to find out where the Polish wholesaler a company called Bianatsky had sourced the beef products listed in the contract because the company didn't provide traceability documents. He then discovered that France Agrimaire, a public body that has ordered from the same supplier since 2013, had never actually asked for them. Une analyse de risque et l'entreprise Bianaki y a échappé pour le marché 2018. Lors de la première audition, lorsque je demande en France à Grimaire, on me dit, oui, oui, euh, tous les industriels euh, sont, euh, sont contrôlés, euh, je dis très bien, euh, de, donc est-ce que Bernacchi avait été auditionné euh, en 2019 On me dit non. Alors, je dis, ben, c'est ballot. Et euh, juste avant la remise de notre rapport, on nous a dit, euh, ben, en fait, euh, l'entreprise Bernacchi n'a pas été contrôlée depuis 2013. Et donc, on s'aperçoit que depuis six ans, euh, Bernaki continue à livrer, co concours au marché public, les obtient. Bon. Senator Gay's investigation showed that the French government may have been at least negligent in the management of a 30 million euro public contract spread over four years. So how could the French authorities pursue this matter further in another EU state? The problem is that the pan-European food fraud network, for all its rules and regulations, has no investigative powers. Il est très clair que la Commission n'a aucun pouvoir de police. Ça, ça relève vraiment des États membres et c'est eux qui font les enquêtes, ils échangent les informations et l'enquête est déclenchée dans le pays qui reçoit cette information. So it fell to the Polish government to take over the investigation. The state's veterinarian authorities approached the company involved. Bianatsky is one of the new giants of the country's hugely profitable meat industry. It's supposedly subject to the same regulations as the rest of Europe. When these kotlety produced, they were collected by the so-called counterproof and were kept in the factory. 
Wszelkie informacje, wszelkie wyniki tej kontroli zostały przekazane oczywiście przez system AAC stronie francuskiej. Natomiast no, mogę powiedzieć, że te kontrole, które zostały tam przeprowadzone nie, nie potwierdziły tego zafałszowania tych kotletów. Także na tym my tak naprawdę zakończyliśmy na tym sprawę. In other words, according to the Polish authorities, the matter is at an end. We wanted to ask Bianacki more about this investigation and the concerns raised in France about its products. Our attempts were rejected. Meanwhile, two Polish journalists had spent six months working on another story involving the Polish beef industry. It too raised disturbing questions. Their undercover investigation began when one of them, Patrick Stepaniak, managed to get himself hired in a small regional slaughterhouse. We got a tip that there was some illegal procedure happening in one of the slaughterhouses. We knew before that there are similar procedure ongoing in other slaughterhouse, but this one, we knew exactly that this is going on. The other house itself is in the middle of nowhere, so there is no possibility to take a look without getting anyone's attention. So I changed some of my appearance, changed some of my behavior, and went for a job interview to the other house. It might sound ridiculous, but I got the job. And then the next day, I started to work as a slaughterman. The first trucks of cows, sick of dead ones, were coming out. Like few of them have some rotting parts. Few of them, like you know, like they have some white thing going out from them through their mouth. And there was no vet, of course, nearby. He just came up in the early in the morning to check up heads of cows, not the meat. He behaved like the this, this bovine meat magically popped out in the middle of the night. And he just comes there and I don't see anything. Shown on Polish television, their investigation caused a storm. The team broadened their investigation to other slaughterhouses across the country and discovered similar practices elsewhere, with sick cattle not fit for consumption entering the food supply chain. It got a big effect. And then our Ministry of Agriculture had to take some actions. They ordered uh, massive checkups in every single slaughterhouse in Poland, which is like 400 of them. But the one who's being inspected knows about it like in a week in advance. So there's no surprise effect. I talked with several former ministers of agriculture and deputies, which told me and that this thing, this scandal, like everybody knew about it that is going on, but it was convenient to basically leave it on and work it because it's pure profit, right? The concern is that substandard meat from these slaughterhouses has been sold on to unsuspecting consumers, both in Poland and overseas. The meat from this slaughterhouse where I work was founded in like 14 countries, France, Germany, Czech Republic, Saudi Arabia, Turkey. Eventually, the revelations caused a diplomatic crisis at European level, and EU authorities in Brussels sent inspectors to audit the entire Polish beef industry. Their report in April 2019 was damning, listing numerous shortcomings in sanitary procedures and traceability. They furnish all Europe à des prix défiant toute concurrence. Et donc, euh, bah, on, a, on a un souci. Cette viande, potentiellement, euh, part sur les marchés sans qu'elle ait été euh, correctement contrôlée. The state didn't really change the law, so it's still happening somewhere over there, right? But Poland isn't the only country wrestling with food fraud, and beef is not the only concern. In part two of this investigation, will go in search of the Spanish fraudsters trading in poisoned tuna and the mafia gangs in Italy making a fortune from fake olive oil. <laughs>